All right, this is just a video, not too long, just explaining uh, progression of uh, traffic danger. Not a perfect progression, but a general progression. So in this first video, you can see that this is infrastructure that is very narrow. It is so narrow that a vehicle cannot go down it, so traffic danger is extremely limited. And you can see that there's some motorbikes, but again, those motorbikes will be going at slow speeds as I am on my bicycle going along this path. Or not path, but infrastructure. All right. So this infrastructure is a little bit wider. So here we can see that cars do come into here. This is a neighborhood area and there's people with cars who live here. The cars, however, as you can see, uh, like the streets are narrow and it is not straightaways. So the speeds are going to be uh, relatively low because A, they can damage their own vehicle, but also that you would be seen as a general hazard to society if you did. And this will be generally just the local neighborhood population who use these streets in that, uh, you know, it, it's, not, it's not set up for vehicles to use them as shortcuts, really, because of that kind of um, broken up sense. So here is an extreme situation where it's so narrow that the two cyclists cannot pass, and I have to slowly pass the pedestrian. And again, this is infrastructure, but it's infrastructure that through its geometry prevents a car from using it, and so therefore the traffic danger is extremely low. Right, moving along, so now we have a, like, if you will, a straightaway. It's a wider street. It is uh, likely one way. Could possibly be two way. But again, it's a fairly narrow street. The buildings are up to the edge, so you can tell you visually, basically, out of your peripheral vision, that you're passing things quickly, which gives you feedback to tell you that your your, your speed. And generally, what happens is that people go slowly, as we just saw with that vehicle that went past there. They know that they're in this residential space and that uh, the speeds need to be kept um, at a reasonable level. So here is a similar sized road, but in this case we have more uh, road markings. So these road markings are giving the sense that the, the space for the vehicle is narrower because there's the lane for the bicycle indicated and then the far sides are, if you will, the pedestrian recommended spaces but as you can see people just kind of use the space so in a fairly fluid manner intersections you don't generally come to a full stop as pedestrians will just walk through cyclists also kind of glide through speeds are not very high and so they can pass by almost like if you were like like fish at these points As you can see up ahead, there is a vehicle uh, on the road and these vehicles, again, will be going through these streets at um, fairly low, uh, low speeds. A, because it's indicated that it's a low speed, 30 kilometers an hour or 20 kilometers an hour, but also that there's design features that tell them that that is the appropriate speed. This is a, this is a road where the markings are, are older, they're kind of worn away a bit, um, and the, uh, there's no... Um, there's no lines making it visually seem like the space for the vehicle is narrower. So this, I would suggest, uh, might feel slightly more dangerous than the previous one. And this is a two-way street. So here's a two-way street in a more suburban area. So here are some of the design features. You see that if you look straight on, it looks quite narrow. You have these horizontal deflections. But actually, the, the width is still quite large. So no no problems for emergency vehicles or anything like that at the entrance and exit of these you have uh, these speed bumps that are made with essentially a, like a tile so you kind of vibrate as you go over it so these are all to indicate that you know you're entering a space uh, where people live and to keep the speeds down again you can see here that it is quite wide so here we have um, a wide wide open street if you will uh, the reason why it's at this point, uh, even though um, you know, it might seem like speeds are higher, is that uh, it's maybe too too hard to see. This is actually um, the cars are forbidden in this uh, on this road at this time of day. There is a car in front of us, but the cars that live locally are allowed to use it. It's not that you can't get out of your neighborhood, but the uh, vehicles that are coming from outside uh, the neighborhood are not allowed to use those use that road. So in, in this 
um, situation. So even though the infrastructure could allow for high speeds, again, the speed limit is 30 kilometers an hour. Uh, I, myself, on my bike, and probably going 20 in the car uh, is yeah, not passing me at high speeds. Again, probably 30 kilometers an hour. But there's very little traffic, right? So there's very little traffic, and the speeds are low. So this would be, uh, from my own point of view, this is still a relatively safe, uh, safe situation. However, we don't know the context when maybe the vehicles are allowed to go along it later in the day. But the 30 kilometers an hour will help with that safety. In this situation, we actually have maybe a wider street and they might have had difficulty with uh, vehicles going faster. So what they've done here, they've done um, some paint to make uh, it visually look more narrow and they've also added these, uh, these bullards that actually do physically, not just visually, uh, make it a narrower space. They're not um, bullards that they would really protect people, but they uh, are, if you will, like a guide that says, you know, this is a pedestrian space and this is the vehicle space, vehicles including bicycles in this case. So I continue uh, along here and then towards the end you'll see that um, as the road finishes, as we go to the left, um, they essentially actually stop traffic from, from passing through. So what that does is that limits the, um, the desirability of that road as a, if you will, a place to cut through. Right, so moving along, so now we're getting closer to if you, like a North American situation where we have a road and we have sidewalks on, on each side. So the sidewalk is essentially infrastructure that is car free, right? So it's, it's separated infrastructure. That very first uh, image that we saw was infrastructure of similar width that was through geometry, car free. People understand that a sidewalk is not to be used by a car and uh, we pass along here. The street itself is fairly narrow. The buildings are up to the edge of the sidewalk. So you get a canyon uh, sense and you also see that things are passing by quickly in your periphery, which generally keeps speeds lower. All right. So again, uh, moving along in terms of, uh, I would say, progressing in, uh, in danger. So now you have two clear cut lanes that are straight away and the sidewalks on the side tell the drivers that they don't need to necessarily worry so much about pedestrians and they can make their speeds go up. So this, uh, this situation, we have no real markings on the road. It's a two-way road and in this, in this case, there isn't, uh, there isn't any safe, this is well, extremely safe infrastructure that's uh, running parallel to it. So this, um, might be considered slightly more dangerous than the, the previous one. In practice, um, whether that is or not, might, might be related to the, uh, the driver attitudes, whether they're zooming along here or driving with um, yeah, respect to, to other users. This video uh, segment is a bit longer than we need it, but uh, I think we'll from here move to a similar, uh, it's going to be similar infrastructure, but the danger I would say is, is going up. And the danger is going up uh, not because any infrastructure changed, but at this point, so the previous one was just before noon, there wasn't really much traffic, similar infrastructure, but now you have traffic. The speed limits uh, on this, the speed limit of this road is, is 40 kilometers an hour. So vehicles aren't going crazy excessive speeds. The fact that it is fairly narrow um, and these vehicles have to pass by um, at close distances can, can help keep that, that speed down. However, in terms of the uh, danger of the user, so 40 kilometers an hour is a higher speed, and the fact that uh, it's you know, relatively uh, close, uh, close contact, if you will. So this might be a point where the danger would be judged too high uh, for um, yeah, a younger individual to, to use it and it would be recommended that some uh, treatment either be done to, to control the vehicles or uh, to, to have that um, alternative that is a safer infrastructure. And whether that infrastructure uh, is merely limiting to vehicles or forbidding vehicles. 
would depend on um, well, the, uh, the policy decisions. Okay, uh, so here now, um, in a so we're in an urban situation, there's more people using this space. It is again two way, but without um, clear clear lanes. There's no sidewalks, so it's it's mixed traffic. However, it's mixed traffic uh, in two ways, in two directions. The speed limit along here, I think at some point we'll see it is, is 30 kilometers an hour. So it is they have reduced the speed to speed limit to one that uh, is generally considered non non life threatening. And then now we're moving again to something maybe yeah, more more familiar to to North America, which would be a normal th a normal maybe in North America is two lanes in each direction, and uh, so very straight roads, clear uh, designation of those streets, um, and progressing along here. Uh, the previous one had bicycle chevrons along the side, which gave you know an idea that it's like, okay, sh you know, it needs to be shared space here. There isn't that. Uh, the vehicles are now going at 50 kilometers an hour uh, in this space, and yeah, from um, from our, well, what we know about traffic danger, that at 50 kilometers an hour, you know, given a collision, there's a, a likelihood that a death could occur. So this uh, would be considered you know, dangerous. This traffic here is dangerous, and in such a situation, you need to have this uh, separated infrastructure on the left, which we refer to uh, as a sidewalk. So probably the majority of cyclists in such a situation would also prefer to be on the, on the sidewalk uh, and not in the road. So that kind of, that uh, concludes just a brief summary of, of a progression. So going from the situation where traffic uh, danger is suppressed through geometry, traffic danger is suppressed through the um, either forbidding the vehicles from being from using that area or that the speeds are kept and then as you go along the need because the traffic as the traffic danger increases the need for separate infrastructure where vehicles are restricted um, so such as a bicycle uh, sorry a bicycle but a, but a sidewalk uh, in in cases where um, yeah there are many other opportunities that uh, that gives choices to people.